guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a deep dive into the HESI A2 math section and what you're going to really want to focus your studies on in order to get a great score on the test. So when I took the HESI exam, I was able to get over a 90% on the test. So I'm going to also recommend a couple websites that really helped me to study as well as a couple online courses that I used. So Memetrix has an online course that is very, very helpful as well as Nurse Hub has an online course that is also very good, very helpful. And both of those online courses can really help you, especially if you're in a time crunch because they have lots of great video content to help you learn about the material. They have flashcards, they have tons of practice questions and practice tests. So both of those I would highly recommend and they're pretty similar to each other in many ways. There's a few little differences. So you can, if you're interested in one of those, I'll link them below and you can kind of compare and look at and see which one might be a better fit for you. There's also a really helpful website, um, Pocket Prep, and they have a lot of great content that can help you prepare for the HESI exam and know what is best for you to focus your studies on. So Pocket Prep has a nice short kind of blog post article that focuses on the six main things that you should study to get ready for the math, the HESI math section. So I'm gonna link that below because I think that's very helpful and they give some examples of different problems that you might see. And Nurse Hub has an article also that has a nice graphic table that talks about all the different formulas that you should have memorized for the HESI math section. So I think that's also extremely helpful because if you know these main math formulas going into the test, you are going to be set up for success. A lot of the problems are not really that hard as long as you know the formula that goes along with that type of problem. So we'll talk about some of those specific um, types of math problems and formulas today, but I think that that Nurse Hub graphic is extremely helpful and I'm gonna link that below so that you can take a look at that and work on memorizing those formulas as you prepare. So let's jump right in. I'm gonna talk about just a few math topics that you should really focus your study efforts on. And as you prepare also, a recommendation that I have is to notice what are the things that you're already really good at and what are the things that you need a lot of work on? So if you're already really good at one type of math problem, stop working on those types of problems and focus only on the ones that you need a lot of work on. Then if you finish really working on those things that you, that you struggle with and that you really need a lot of work on, then you can go back and review the things that you already are pretty familiar with. So especially if you're in a crunch, focus on the things that you are not good at first and get those things down first. All right, so first of all, fractions are a big deal on the HESI A2 exam. I had lots and lots, I don't even know how many, but I had tons of questions that had to do with fractions. So fractions are when you're dealing with um, a part of a whole number, and they also can have an integer that's part of it. So like for example, four and one fourth. So in one fourth, you have the numerator, which is the top number, and then you have the denominator, the bottom number. Some of the types of questions that you're going to probably run into that have to do with fractions is, first of all, you'll have a whole list of different numbers and fractions. So they'll give you, let's say, six or seven different numbers. Then you, your job is going to be to line them up in order from least to greatest or from greatest to least. So you're going to want to know how to work with fractions and how to determine which ones are lesser in value, which ones are greater in value. Sometimes they're gonna give you numbers that have a different denominator and so you're going to have to first convert all of them to the least common denominator and so that they're equivalent to each other and then you'll be able to find out if they're lesser or greater than each other or you'll just be able to work with them once you have found that common denominator. You'll also want to work on studying how to multiply and how to divide fractions. You'll want to just know in general how to work with fractions, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and then being able to order them from least to greatest and greatest to least. So similar to fractions, you also will want to study up on decimals. So with decimals, again, you're working with numbers that are part of a whole. You'll want to understand the positions of each number in the decimal. So like, for example, 1.25, okay? So you're gonna to want to understand the units place, and then when you get into the decimal places, you know, after the dot, you have one point and then two five, so you have the two that's in the tenths, 
and then you have the five that's in the hundreds. And so that sometimes the decimals are a little bit longer, so you'll want to study up on the different places and positions of the decimal number. They will probably give you questions where you're going to have to convert a decimal to a fraction or a fraction to a decimal. So you'll want to understand that and understand how to do that. And also with decimals, they may also have you order them from least to greatest or greatest to least. So you'll want to really have a good handle on that as well. So moving on, you want to understand ratios. So a ratio is a relationship between two numbers that compares their quantities. So for example, a ratio of two to five. And you'll want to know how to write that so it's like two and then colon five. And another way of saying that would be two is to five. So you'll want to study up on that, what ratios are, how to work with them. Another form of a ratio is a proportion, and that's where two ratios are compared to each other. So for example, this is like A is to B as C is to D. So A colon B as C colon D. So when you're working with ratios, often they're going to ask you to solve for one of those numbers so they'll give you all three they'll give you three out of four numbers and then there will be one unknown that you need to find so you'll want to learn how to solve for that number so another thing you're going to want to study up on is percentages so for example 50 percent which you would also write as 50 over 100 or as a decimal that would be 0.50 so you're going to want to understand percentages, how to um, do calculations with percentages, and just how to work with percentages in different types of equations. You'll also want to know simple algebra. So in algebra, you have letters that you assign to unknown numbers, and then you set them up in an equation where the left side of the equation equals the right side of the equation. So that would be called an equality, and usually, you're going to have to be solving for one unknown number. So you want to learn how to isolate the unknown symbol or number on one side of the equation and then get everything else over to the other side of the equation and solve for that unknown number. When you're working with equations also, another thing you want to understand is the order of operations. So people often talk about this PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S, the so order of how you work through a, a problem, um, parentheses, and then exponents, then multiplication, then division, then addition, then subtraction. And that's the order that you'll work through an equation in. So make sure you understand the order of operations. You'll also want to understand the addition law when you're working with equalities, and you'll also want to understand the multiplication law when you're working with equalities. And then the final thing that I'm gonna mention today is that you'll want to really understand the metric system. So the metric system is the standardized system for measuring um, mass, weight, length, time. And this is the system that is generally used in the medical system. So you're first of all going to want to note for the test, but also you'll end up using it in the field that you're going into. For length, the meter is used. For mass, the gram is used. For volume, the liter is used. And then for temperature, Celsius is used. It's very important for the math section to know how to convert from the US standard system into the metric system. So for example, you'll want to know how to convert from miles into meters or from miles to kilometers. You'll want to understand how to convert from Fahrenheit degrees into Celsius degrees. So those conversions are very important and I remember having many, many, many of those types of questions on my exam. So that's a quick rundown of some of the tips that I have for how to study for the math section of the HESI exam. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and drop a comment down below. And if you did enjoy this video, go ahead and smash that like button below. You can subscribe to my channel for a lot more content on how to prepare for your nursing entrance exams and also how to pass your prerequisite classes to get into nursing school.